Welcome back to Captain's Lounge Studios. I'm joined today by two opposite sides of the music industry, one on the recording side and one on the actual writing and playing of the music. So welcome to Rational Recordings and Rational Music, all mixed in together. Sitting at the table with me today is, jo is uh, Joey Blunk and Brett Batterman. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in. Good to be here. Thanks for having us. So let's start off with you first, Joey, because we heard so much from him in our first interview that, oh my goodness. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> how did you get started in music? Oh, I mean, I started, I started playing trumpet in fifth grade, and uh, I almost quit at before the end of fifth grade. And then sixth grade, I started uh, jazz band, and then from there, I just kind of, you know, jazz was like the main thing for me. Um, That's so. unusual for someone, you know, because you're quite a young fella. Yeah. And, uh, you know, jazz sort of was dying out quite significantly, and to find uh, someone of your age group into jazz is a little bit unusual. Well, and, you know, it was, uh, I think, my middle school band director, uh, Lisa Keener is her name. I owe a lot to all of my band directors, but um, did a really good job of, of kind of... Uh, quote unquote a gateway drug into music of like you know the song that got me hooked was we played 25 or 6 to 4 by Chicago oh okay. you know and that's like yeah are we really full jazz at that point but like you get there and then maybe we do a little bit out of Count Basie maybe we do some Art Blakey and it's like okay now I'm sold that was kind of my, my door into and that was your door into, into music yeah but you now have to make the very next step Mm -hmm. You're also a songwriter correct? yeah I, uh, I started writing when I was in high school um, and Probably for better and not worse. I can't find recordings of a lot of those things that I wrote in high school And I think that's probably best that it stays that way uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, I've, I've been writing since high school um, and it's so interesting I don't know if, if Brett if you and I have ever talked about it But I think one of the really interesting things as a songwriter and as a composer is you have all these influences uh, that that you know really shape the sound that you have in your head of what you're going for and I just think the more that you write and the more that you work the closer you get to that concept you have in your head mm -hmm. of of like no this is what I'm hearing and now I can actualize it and now I can make it a reality so and that's been one thing that's been so exciting about the album for me right right we, we will discuss the album sure. a little bit later but you, you sort of mentioned you know knowing Brett how did you guys get to meet? I was I was finishing my my master's degree at uh, at CU Boulder, and uh, for the master part of the master's degree, I had a recital that I had to do. And and going into that, um, I uh, learned about the Longmont has the Winter Walkabout mm -hmm. Music Festival, and um, I, I you know I, I threw our name in the ring, and we ended up getting picked to play. And and so we're we're at the show and getting ready to play. And and Brett is the one taking care of sound. And so we were, we were talking before the show, and then uh, we ended up playing. And then after everything was finished, yeah. you know, we just talked about how much you enjoyed the music, and mm -hmm. then we everything kind of went from there. I mean, that's like at least the start of it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Well, and I had said, you know, I have a recording studio. I love your music. And if you want to put our heads together, you know, uh, you want to make the band show up, I'll make the record button go red. And uh, <laughs> we can just make an album together, produce it together. Yeah. You know, because I know that there's no money really in these genres. Yes. So. Okay, so you turn up to do a, a gig, uh -huh. got the band and everything, and you know you're going to be using a sound engineer that you have never met before. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that ever worry you? Because um, the sound engineer is going to make you or break you. Yeah. I would say it actually worries me more now, uh, having had like positive experiences, because I, I mean, I've played so many shows where it's just been like, it's probably going to be bad. You know, oh, <laughs> like going into it, it's just, it's probably going to be bad. Um, but now that like we had an actual like good experience and, and can see what, what can be, now it's like, well, hopefully it won't be bad. You know, I, I mean, we, we, played a, we played a show last year down in, in Denver where uh, there was a three band lineup and we were the last to sound check and we only got a line check. Oh. And it was, with all, the, with all the equipment and the electronics we have and everything, it's just, it ended up going okay. But yeah, now I'm more nervous about it, if anything. Right, <laughs> right. Aren't you allowed to take along your own engineer? Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure it, if we end up getting gigs that are of that nature, um, I don't know if we're at that caliber yet, oh. uh, to, be, to be frank. Well, you've played some pretty big gigs. Um, I mean, with this group, we've, we've done some of, the, some of the 
some of the bigger venues in Denver, I would say, I think we still have a long way to go to, to where I would like for things to be. You know, I, I, I think long term, what I'm really hoping for us to do is to start getting into some of the bigger theaters, even just as an opening act for bands coming through. Like, I mean, I'll, there, there are several bands out there where, where I would be thrilled just to be the opening act for, for this, you know, like Hiatus Coyote is a, is a band that I just adore. Mm-hmm. So. Well, many many opening bands have gone on to make it rather big. Mm -hmm. I can remember Jimi Hendrix being an opening band yeah. to Eric Clapton. Yeah, that's not going to happen again. Unfortunately, <laughs> but... <laughs> Just amazing. Just amazing. <laughs> so, you've now got a concept. Now let's talk about the band itself. Now the music that you do is is what jazz fusion, progressive rock fusion. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's a little of each. I I mean, maybe it's it's uh, uh, self serving that that I don't think it fits into either category. I think many listeners would probably say like, oh, it's this one or it's this one, you know. But I think it has elements. It of has both. a little bit of elements in yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. And that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Uh, when I was a DJ up in uh, Fort Collins, I used to do a radio show every Saturday uh. night for five years. Um, I always, uh, all my music was European, and it was either blues rock fusion, jazz rock fusion, mm -hmm. progressive rock, yeah. um, all European. So I was able to play a whole ton of stuff that had never been heard in America. And I got some fascinating phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> fascinating phone calls. <laughs> Typically saying, what the f*** was that? <laughs> <laughs> so, let's talk about the LP, mm -hmm. okay? Where did the concept from the LP come, where did the concept come from? So, I mean, like, you know, we, we like we were saying, Brett and I had, had talked, you know, at, at, at several points, really, mm -hmm. about, like, this is something we should do. We should get this recorded at some point. And, and I think the really funny thing is that the, the way that the band was when, when Brett and I met and the way the band is, it's like different bands, honestly. Okay. We started uh, during COVID, right? So COVID hits, there's no shows. My roommates at the time, uh, Rhiannon Dewey and Michael D'Angelo, who were saxophone and drums in mm -hmm. the band, respectively, um, we started just doing like live stream shows from our basement, just the three of us. Nice. We would just play some, you know, jazz yeah. stuff. We'd stream it online. As we're doing that, you know, we're, it was it was fun to play with each other. And then there was one night where um, I think Rhiannon and I were chatting, and we were just talking about like, man, like, you know, I don't, I, I like playing jazz. You know, mm -hmm. it's not something I dislike, but like, I don't want to just be playing jazz for the rest of my life. Music that's been played since the 1950s, right? right. I wanted, I want to create something new. And we're just like, why aren't we doing that? It's like. Because we haven't done it, so it's like, let's do the thing. <laughs> so that was kind of the motivator to start getting the groundwork laid for this, uh, you know, and start getting it moving. Actually, funny, one of the songs off the album, Katana, the first time it was ever played was the three of us in our basement. Oh, okay. You know, and, and it's definitely a different version yes. now. Yes. But, um, so anyways, we, we, we get the band formed, we start rehearsing, and we, we've got, we get a show booked. We played a, a little show at a place uh, called The Muse uh, mm -hmm. in Lafayette. There's a great yeah. venue. They, Claire Church and, and Pete do fantastic work there. Um, so we did that show, and then you know, we started looking at doing other shows and, and getting things booked, and we must have had probably three or four shows in a row where either someone at the venue or someone in the band got COVID. And oh. so we had to cancel the show. And we just kept having to cancel these shows. And it was a real bummer. You're not kidding. Yeah. And so last, like, what was it? Probably like, it might have been before last January. Damn. It was it was maybe towards the end of, of uh, 2021, it would have been then, that I, I, Brett and I were chatting. And it's like, if we're not playing shows, let's just record the album now. <laughs> so we started getting everything in place. And then we ended up doing it in March last year. I don't remember the exact It was in May. Oh, was it May? Yeah, okay. One, it was exactly what you said. A few people had gotten COVID. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, six weeks later, we've got a book, a date booked, and then someone else gets COVID. Yes. Or then, you know, yeah. And so with six people, the scheduling is tough. Yes. That was where you planned it wrong. You should have all got COVID <laughs> at the same Together. time. <laughs> You know. So you should have had a group COVID <laughs> meeting. Right, the old chicken pox right. thing. That's it. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. Next album. Next album. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the, the LP is going to be recorded. I, I always call them LPs. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. I'm sorry. That's no, it. That's... I'm old school. <laughs> if it ain't on vinyl, it ain't music. Yeah. That's right. um, tell us about the makeup of the band. So it's, uh, it's a six-piece band. Um, and so we've got, um, I think it's probably, I'll just say that, you know, so I play trumpet, 
And I actually do, I do trumpet, and then I also have um, an effects pedal that I use with my mm -hmm. trumpet, so I yeah. can use distortion and all this stuff. Uh, and then on saxophone is Rhiannon Dewey. Uh, on guitar, we have Andres Orco. On piano, uh, and a ton of synthesizers was Jeff Jenkins. And then on bass, we had Nate Marsh. And then drums was Michael D'Angelo. Poor old drummer, always oh. left to the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> There is a malicious rumor that the reason that rock bands use uh, fog machines is for the simple reason it hides the drummer. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So, you're all decided you're going to, because of what's happened with COVID and mm -hmm. all the rest of it, you're going to record it. Now, where did the, it's a fascinating name, where did the name of the LP come from? Oh, yeah, so the, uh, well, you know, it's like we were saying before the show, too, that we really, like, pulled a Black Sabbath, because the, the band name is yeah. Bigfoot Meter, the album name is Bigfoot Meter, there's a track on the album called Bigfoot Meter. Um, but, so, I was, I, uh, I'm, I'm really big into camping, really big into hiking, and um, I had driven out to, to Glenwood Springs, mm -hmm. and I was just camping out there, and I, had, I was hiking on a trail, and I can't remember the exact name of the trail. I know I've driven by it since then, and I actually drove by with my girlfriend. I was like, there it is. That's, that's where it came from. And Because hiking up, to, or getting up to the start of the trail, there's, uh, there's a couple houses along the way, and one of the houses has like a bulletin board uh, post outside talking about how Bigfoot is in the area, oh. and they have a Bigfoot meter of how likely you are to see Bigfoot that day. And it goes all the way from 1% up to 3%. I might have to put a massive <laughs> groan in here. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is the LP cover. No, no, oh. I, it's not, honestly, it's, it's a pretty, it's no offense to the person who has that in their front yard. It's, it's a little rugged looking the way that they designed it. It's not really. Sounds perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay, so that's, that's where you got the name from. Mm -hmm. you, you just saw this and it just, Stuck. I was like, it's a good band name. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. I must admit, I used to enjoy playing Black Sabbath, and I used to enjoy saying that was Black Sabbath on Black Sabbath, uh, uh, playing the track Black Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always got a kick out of doing that. How long did it take you to actually uh, record the LP? Uh, like, the pro like, like, are you talking of, like, get there that day and then... Well, no, I mean, you like, probably did it over a number of days, I'd imagine. It was one day. One day. Oh, one day. Yep. Yeah. How many tracks? Six. Six wow. tracks, two, that is, two or three takes of each. Yeah. yeah. That is going some. Yeah. We, it I, was. The, I think the intention going into it was, was to really make it a very authentic and real representation of the music. You know, I... I I don't know. I didn't want it to be going in and like, oh, we didn't really like how this one part, oh, this is a little out of tune. Let's go to, you know, and like, let's make it like a, because I, I don't know why you wouldn't want it to be let's like a live make show. It real. Yeah. Let's make it real. Yeah. Understand. And there's imperfections, but I think it's more authentic that way. Yeah. I like it. Because when we were talking um, in the other show that we did, you know, basically uh, what Brett was telling me was you can record in the morning, you can edit in the afternoon, and you can publish at night. <laughs> <laughs> All of the hits were made like that, generally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. until you start scaling up production. But Right, right, right. I should imagine, though, that once you, once you got through the first song, everyone was in the groove. There were definitely ebbs and flows. That was a horrible flows. pun, by the way, but that's all right. <laughs> there were ebbs and flows, for sure. I mean, because there's... I, I, I do not mean this as like a bragging thing, but it's challenging music. You know, it's very... Yes. It's very there's a lot of intricacies to it, so... Um, it was definitely there were there were definitely moments where I was like ah that I like they, there was one one take of one of the tunes where within like the first thirty seconds to a minute or so it's like let's just let's do that again. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I've done openings for this show just like that. <laughs> I think now would be a really really good time to actually listen to one of the tracks yeah. from the LP. This particular track is called Broken Promises. Mm -hmm. Where did that come from? Uh, I wrote it in. I think it would have been early, no, it would have been late 2019 was when I started writing it, and it's actually, it's about um, how when uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg died on the Supreme Court, and then Amy Coney Barrett was nominated, and this was after the whole, all of the yes. stuff with Merrick Garland that happened in 2015 at the end of Obama's presidency, and then the hypo basically the hypocrisy of Mitch McConnell. Right. So, and I and I don't without even getting too political. I think regardless of what side you are on the political aisle, I think we can all agree that is not the way that our government should be functioning. Of the inconsistency, you will get no arguments from me yeah. at <laughs> all. And we have it on tape that I think America should go to a parliamentary system. But that's, 
<laughs> we won't get into that today. <laughs> so let's have a listen. This this is uh, track number five. The LP is called Bigfoot Meter, and this is Broken Promises. I can hear the, definitely hear the the uh, the, the jazz in there, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've got a nice little piece of progressive rock mm -hmm. drifting in and out. But when you said intricate, that was really intricate. I, I credit where credits due. I think a lot of that is coming from uh, Mike on drums, Michael D'Angelo. I, I genuinely think that, I mean, undoubtedly Michael is is one of the best drummers I've ever played with. He might be the best drummer I've ever played with. Like Michael is just unmatched on drums and the and like you're saying the intricacy and the in the every single subdivision is is so intentional and so expertly placed mm -hmm. so i mean yeah not to say nothing of everyone else in the band but right. mike is just on I another mean, level please correct me if i'm wrong but in jazz really the, the drums do drive the beat yeah whereas in rock is typically the bass that will drive the beat. <clears throat> and I would, I would even say, you know, in, in jazz, it's, it's sh should in a in a good rhythm section, it should be a cooperative effort. You know, I, I have many friends who are drummers where they'll talk about, you know, and I don't think this is unique to jazz, but like, be at a jam session and getting ready to play, and they might be getting ready to go up to a song and see like, ooh, that guy's playing bass. I'm not playing on this one, <laughs> awesome. or vice versa. You know, just that <laughs> kind of thing. Because yeah, it's, yeah, it's just different feelings there. Do you, do you use multi-track recording, or, or um, do you sort of like try and record individually? Uh, we did the whole thing. So you do everyone. it as a band? Yes. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine trying to yeah. piece over it, because the interaction is just so important. Right. Because mm -hmm. you, know. you all play off each other. Oh, yes. Especially with this style of music. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, know, I know many, many bands, and you've probably seen this, um, many, many bands, um, that's not how they do it. Yeah. They'll lay down a bass line, they'll lay down a drum line, then they'll think about putting in some keyboard, mm -hmm. piano, and mm -hmm. then right at the end they'll put in the lead guitar and vocals. I think I got the order right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really depends on what the recording is going to be. Um, oh, true. Yeah, I mean, I just listened to an interview with Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins, and he talks about you know getting the core of the band done, but then they have all of these beautiful string arrangements that have to be laid down afterwards. Um, how, uh, like on Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, they didn't really track to a click, so trying to have an arrangement conducted and performed by a small orchestra is very difficult. Um, yeah, it really depends on the way you want to do it. I think yeah. for our recording, we had talked about making sure that we didn't have any extra hurdles for the performers to encounter, um, and then also allowing the performances to speak for themselves, the relationships in the, the musical relationships to speak for themselves, and allowing everybody to shine. Um, and another point that I think I should bring up is that I was on Joey about rehearsal mm -hmm. for months. And yes. be, just because, you know, it's the watchword is, you know, everybody practice as much as you can before the day of execution. And he's like, well, we don't really rehearse. <laughs> we don't really, you know, but everybody's really good and I'm sure we're going to do great. And that left me with a little bit of anxiety. But then, <laughs> of course, when they showed up on the day of, um, they were all ready to perform. And I think that the record speaks to that largely because there really isn't a, a stall in the whole record. Like, it's, it's nonstop energy from start to finish. So. Nice. Yeah. And, and you only ever had to do a maximum of two takes. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that that's incredible. I think there's one little thing that got fixed on. I don't even yeah, remember what yeah, it was. But yeah, very very count. small. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, I usually say no <clears throat> funny business. There's no yeah. there's no overdubs, no auto tuning, no rhythmic you know 
putting it on the grid, none of mm -hmm. that time alignment. Yep, it's just them. It's just the music as it right. was intended. Yeah. We, we, we talked about uh, Stavros, uh, whom, whom I know, and the way that he puts his music together. He has musicians from all over America, mm. yeah. all recording individually, and then and all then it, coming to a central point in Denver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they go in and put on the vocals. Right. And I'm going, that. How does that work? <laughs> that must be horrible. <laughs> it happens a lot these days. Yes. You know, even orchestra recordings, they have um, music, they have software that will operate over the internet where the producer can be in one city and the orchestra can be in the other and that there is no time gap. Like they There's can, no delay. They can hear what's being recorded, they can give feedback, oh, at this bar the cellos are too loud or whatever. And uh, yeah, that's all across the web now. So. You can do anything now. Um, you don't That's all have incredible. to be in the same room. I mean, it's good for evolutionary purposes, but uh, I think you know the sky's the limit now when it comes to collaborations across yeah. the web. Right. Mm -hmm. So for collaboration reasons, it's great. Yeah. But I still can't imagine not having everyone there in the studio and doing it together. I, yeah. I can't imagine yeah. doing that. Well, especially yeah. the music yeah, that is for Joey's music. Yeah, it's, yes. right. Yeah, it's, it's basically would not work. It's not. It's a non-starter. <laughs> yeah, it just well, and it would probably fall flat. Mm -hmm. You know. Can would, you imagine trying to put together that beginning just, it, yeah, from yeah. six different locations? Yeah. Oh, it'd be a nightmare. Well, yeah, it'd be like he's trying to film us all individually with this conversation. Yeah. It's yeah. just not going to stand up. Yeah. It won't have legs. <laughs> what, what, what amazed me was everyone's absolutely precise timing yes. on it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there were instruments cutting in and out, and yeah. it, it was... Well, and they can all see each other in the studio. Yeah, yeah. So Brett did a great job of yeah. having the setup, so the, the yeah. visual is just so important. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then I think another th important thing to bring up is that the only acoustic instruments used were the drums, the sax, and the trumpet. Mm -hmm. Having the bass, the guitar, and the keyboards be all direct and electric was... Not only is it crucial to the sound, but I think it was crucial to the success of the session because we weren't didn't have a lot of bleed issues, you know, with right. screeching guitar amps or loud bass yeah. amps or keyboards that are cutting through or anything like that. So, so you couldn't really hear the feedback, or I didn't really have no, and, yeah. and it didn't worry anybody. No, oh. well, there wasn't any feedback. Yeah, it was all through the head. We were all in the head. Yeah, it was oh, all, everyone's yeah. on oh, everyone's on phone it. getting feedback uh -huh. yeah, from yeah. directly from you. Uh huh. Yep, and then just get that comfortable so everybody can hear each other. And that's a, that's a great way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. I was really, I was really taken with how it turned out. Like we fell in and came out smelling like a rose. I still can't, <laughs> I still can't believe that you you did the whole thing in a day. Yeah, I yeah. mean to me it that is truly it was. Yeah, no, but. Yeah. If it was 24 hours, I'd still be amazed. Well, and you have to remember, too, that Joey and I had been collaborating for two years, yes. you know, on the phone. He's been working with the band, and I've been brainstorming and, you know, getting all of my ducks in a row for the moment of, for the Super Bowl. That's right. essentially what, we're, what we were preparing for, is like, right. this. we're going to have one moment to get this right, and yeah. if we screw it up, it'll be all on us. Yeah. Or all the laurels and glory will be up for us, too. So. <laughs> is this available yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's on. It's on Bandcamp. It's streaming basically everywhere. everywhere. Um, thankfully, the name is the name is pretty unique, so it's not too hard to find. <laughs> if you right. search Bigfoot Meter, there aren't a lot of other things that come up. Except the silly photograph of a guy with a sign in his yeah. garden <laughs> that looks a bit tacky. <laughs> Actually, well, since you mentioned it with the, out, the, the, the cover, of using that as the cover, too, we should talk, because Brett really, I mean, well, I should really quick say, too, that, like, I, I know I've said it to you before, but, like, Brett and, and I've had several other people where have just been champions of, of this music and this project, because there have been several moments where I'm just, it's just so much work, and it's like, I just can't do this anymore. You know, it's just too much of an undertaking, and I, I don't have the capacity to do it, but, but I mean, there would... I think there were probably periods where we would go a month or two without talking, and then I get a call from Brett, and it would be like, "So when are we recording this? When's this happening?" <laughs> so it would—it just—I mean, as I know we've, we've yeah. said, Brett is just was yeah. giving me that extra push to really make it happen. But I was gonna—the the cover of the LP is—is is, yeah. you should talk yeah. about so that. So I was uh, on a backpacking trip in the Wind River Range in Wyoming, and just taking photos, you know, as you do when you're out there on, on vacation. And I came across this, in the Wind River Range, there's lots of a contrast in snow depth. Mm -hmm. So you get these interesting formations with trees and roots and things. And I snapped a pic of essentially what looked like a veil and these strange eyes coming through the picture. Ah. And especially once I sent it to Joey with uh, being a Pantone, you know, similar to many jazz albums, you just make it a yes. one color. And after a while, it really 
we just really both was like, yeah, this looks yeah. good. This yeah. is exactly what we wanted. So Perfect. it was really serendipity to find that picture. But now several people have said like that, wow, you guys must have really planned that cover because I can see there's faces <laughs> jumping out and things and that looks like a veil. And it's like, no, no, that was just shooting from the hip yep, while yeah, I was yeah. out in the trail. So. And you, you know something? They, they won't believe you. <laughs> well, they, they don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the mystique too, you know. You know yeah. yeah, it's like well and it's sometimes, you know, you can believe that there is fate or guiding hands to things, but um you know, if you are aware and sensitive enough, um you'll make the right choice and yes. bring and bring the right image or what sound or whatever you're looking for. You just right. have to believe. Yeah. Right. How many tracks are on the LP? Uh there's six. Six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's the average length? Probably about eight minutes, I, I eight would minutes say. They're pretty long. You've done a lot of gigs yeah. here in Colorado. What was the worst one you've ever done? Ooh. I assume I have to count gigs that I actually played. It would help. I, yeah. Because <laughs> I have had several where I've, I've, like I know we talked about those ones that got canceled from COVID, but I've had several where I've showed up to the gig and they're like, oh, we're not, we're not doing music tonight. And it's like, are you oh. kidding me? <laughs> And, if, and that the worst that one with that was it was actually like it was a background music gig too. So we're just sitting in the corner playing, you know, just yeah. wall decoration. You know, yeah. that's all. I would probably say one of those, you know, where it's background music. You're not, don't get too creative on your solos. You know, don't do anything too adventurous. Don't play too loud. You know, just just nice audio wallpaper mm -hmm. for people to enjoy. Those yeah. are not, I don't do those anymore, which is, I'm very grateful for though. I can understand so, that being very frustrating. Yeah, yeah. But no, actually I am excited because we, we have, um, we have another show coming up with the band, uh, with Bigfoot Meter, which I'm, I'm thrilled about that we've, we've managed to get it. Uh, we're playing at Larimer Lounge mm -hmm. on, uh, on Saturday, March 4th. We have tickets on sale now. They're on Larimer's website. Um, and it's uh, doors are 4 p.m. The show starts at 5 p.m. It's us, and then there are two other bands going on first. It's Alex Street. He has a, a an electronic project that he's doing, um, and then uh, second is a band called Same Cloth. That's like a very neo soul kind mm -hmm. of thing. And then we're we're kind of closing the thing out. Um, so you can get tickets for that now, um, and then. Sorry. I was just going to say, if people, if people are interested in, in learning more about us, the best way to find us is probably through Instagram. Uh, we're just Bigfoot Meter yeah. on Instagram. We have a Facebook page. Um, and, and, you know, I, I, I also have my own website, which is just joeyblunk.com. Mm -hmm. And there's stuff about it there, too. But those are probably the best ways to... Have you ever played down at the Speakeasy on 3rd and Main? Uh, no, but you know what? I've tried to, and I never get notes back. I have sent notes about getting shows there, and they okay. never get back Sarah, to me. Sarah, the owner, uh -huh. is an incredible businesswoman. She really is. And, uh, in fact, today we're celebrating down there the 10th anniversary of the Speakeasy. Oh! And uh, she's a fascinating woman, but she is hopeless. <laughs> hopeless. And I'm saying this, and Sarah, I hope you're listening. <laughs> you hopeless at writing back yeah and she knows it and she admits oh, it we love you sarah <laughs> i will be seeing her later on today i will make sure that i drop your name i'll give you a card give me a card <laughs> that i can give to her yeah. because she is always looking for good music great yeah. always yeah. give me yeah. two cards great because yeah. i want one <laughs> <laughs> um it's been a joy talking to you both about Likewise. music i love music as you yeah. probably guessed and uh you know, it is fascinating to find people on your side of the music table. Can I sing? I have sung in, you know, musicals and all the rest of it, but, you know, I'm not a musician. Mm -hmm. You guys are musicians. And I consider you a musician as well, because oh, you thanks. are yeah, very much so. Well, and that's how I approach it, too. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to this show. I'm Nigel Abes, your host, signing off. Goodbye from the Captain's Lounge Studios. Thank you.